So a client uh, came to me uh, with uh, this Honda Civic 2011 and uh, they indicated that every time that it was shutting off randomly. Now, the AAA person that worked with them initially gave them a, a battery change, so they got a new battery. And uh, I think there might be um, a combination of like um, problems. So let's go ahead and explore this, uh, and uh, we'll show you how I diagnose this and uh, resolve this problem. The first thing I did was uh, check and see if uh, there were any check engine codes. And as you can see, there are no check engine codes that uh, are particular to like give me a direction to indicate that the uh, that the stalling that I'm experiencing is something that is going to be embedded within the actual uh, uh, DTCs. So I don't really have much to go on, so we're going to have to go at this as, as old school as possible. My initial hunch is uh, possibly a failing alternator. Sometimes an alternator is uh, unable to uh, maintain a charge, it'll shut off and then the uh, car will just stall. But that really doesn't make much sense because if it does turn back on, then the baseline is no longer uh, consistently going lower. It's actually the same and there would be something else going on. But either way, the first thing I want to do is just check the battery voltage and see what the status of the battery is. And as you can see, 14.57 is a pretty... Actually, I, th I believe this is actually the um, the idle. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. So the 14.57 that you see on the screen is is the idle. Uh, the engine's actually on and the uh, car's idling. So we have good voltage uh, from the alternator. And I have I think maybe like the radio on and the headlights on, so the accessory and the headlight is on. So the battery's alternator is doing what it's supposed to do. So we know that we have a good battery and we have a good alternator, so we can move on from there. The audio is not the best, but if you listen closely, you can hear how there's like a scratching sound, and it sounds pretty much like what bearings sound like when they are failing. At this point, I'm trying to replicate the failure that the client has experienced, and I have the car sitting in idle, and I had the temperature go all the way, go up, the operational temperature. I noticed that there's no difference in the actual change in the vehicle. Uh, I noticed that when I turn the steering wheel to the left and to the right, that the RPMs drop in idle. That was an indicator to me that the serpentine belt, when more demand is requested from it, from the power steering pump, the belt itself seizes up. That means it's not spinning freely and grabs the, the crankshaft and it shuts the engine off. So that was an indicator that that's the issue right there. Now that lines up with the grinding the grinding sound that I heard earlier because it's grinding because the one of those pulleys have failed. The pulley that failed is actually on the AC compressor. And we'll find out later on, as you can see. But take a look at the video, you can see how, a car sh how it, it shuts off. So while I was testing uh, turning the steering wheel left and right, I heard a snap sound. Well, that's what happened. The belt snapped. So if that's not an indicator something's causing the belt to bind up, I don't know what is. There is a lot of play in this pulley that is on the um, AC compressor. But at this moment, I'm not really sure if that's the only pulley that's causing a problem.
So after replacing the belt and taking for a test drive, you can see in this video that it stalls multiple times. So this really helps me narrow down even more that's definitely belt related. In this next step, I'm going to remove the new belt and just double check, triple check the pulleys, and then you'll see me replace the uh, power, I'm sorry, the air conditioning compressor, because that's the one with the failed pulley.
This is a close-up of the hydraulic tensioner bolt. You'll see in the next um, photo where I have a long wrench on. You want to push this towards the cabin of the vehicle to remove or release the tension from the belt. The hydraulic tensioner for the serpentine belts has failed. You can see that it's very wet around the tensioner, so that needs to be replaced. When you take this apart, check and make sure that there are no uh, wet marks around this tensioner. Here's a close-up of how I'm jacking the car up. With the wheel removed, it's a lot more access to remove the belt. I chose to remove the belt uh, downwards, uh, and it allows me to also install the belt easier, so I take the wheel off to help with access. There are two O-rings that you need to pay attention to that you'll have to replace. Uh, this is one of them. It's often easier to uh, get an understanding for what bolts are going to be removed if you can take a look at the Part you're going to replace. So this is all. These are all four bolts that will be removed. Uh, one is at the bottom. It's a little hard to get to. You can't see. You can you can get to it if you can feel it, but it's there. This bolt is the difficult to access bolt. If you are laying under the car, it is located on the passenger side, right above that frame that holds, uh, that runs along the short axis of the vehicle. We need to create some additional space, and we're going to do that by removing the radiator so the radiator has two bolts and uh, they are 10 millimeters and I think and you can also use a Phillips screwdriver to remove them. I'm going to compare the two uh, AC compressors and you can see that the pulley on the newer one is uh, it spins more freely than the older one and also there is a lot of play and play on the older one and uh, this is what's causing the binding up to happen and ultimately causing the vehicle to shut off because the belt itself cannot turn anymore so it gets kind of 
grabs the belt, it grabs the pulley really hard, and it just seizes the engine and causes the uh, car to stall. So it's subtle, but you can kind of hear it. That's the best way I would say. And you know, you want to also pay attention to other pulleys as they fail. Listen for them. Once you remove the radiator, it's easy to lift the AC compressor right up. It's really important to uh, keep the contamination as minimal as possible inside of the uh, AC compressor. So leave these rubber, um, um, I don't know, they're like plugs installed until you are ready to actually screw the hoses into those locations. I have placed both O-rings side by side. On the left side is the older O-ring. It's black. And the new uh, AC compressor comes with two new O-rings on the right. They're green. One's a little bit smaller in uh, diameter, so just uh, the outer diameter. So just double check. These are the two hoses that are going to be uh, connected to your AC compressor. The two top bolts for the radiator fan, you can see them here. And then don't forget to connect your, uh, your connector. When you attach your new coolant, you want to attach it to this side. This is the low side. And uh, when you unscrew this cap, you'll see that there's a Schrader valve, similar to what uh, certain bicycles have, and definitely what your tire has. So it's a Schrader valve. What I like to do is to bleed the system. So I will uh, spray a little bit of the um, uh, the AC coolant. So remember, when you do this, you want to shake it very vigorously for two minutes and then when you spray it into the high side you want to turn the bottle upside down so it's important to do that now once you do that I just spray a little bit in it and then I will uh, go over to the high pressure side unscrew that cap and then depress the Schrader valve just to release the uh, any air that's trapped in the system itself that's going to help with the, the bleeding process. On the inside of the car, you want to do a couple things. One, you want to uh, get the vehicle to uh, operational temperature. And once it's set the operational temperature, uh, that's going to be when the dial on the engine temperature is in the middle. Uh, you want to turn on your AC to its maximum um, f flow, airflow, like the velocity and also the temperature at its coolest. And then place, place your uh, air condition in recycle mode so that way the air that's inside the vehicle is uh, being recycled. And then you're going to use a thermometer to just check and see if you are actually um, well, it'll be obvious if it's hot outside that the AC is actually functional and it's being charged. If you like this content, uh, don't forget to subscribe. It truly helps with me creating more content for you. And I uh, hope that it was helpful. And don't forget to uh, thumbs up and maybe even thumbs down. But share with your friends. Let them know. And I hope that it helped you. I hope you enjoyed the format. It was uh, specifically done to minimize the amount of video footage you have to look at and to give you the best possible 
shot of the actual fasteners and um, you know just a little bit of tips that I can share along the way either way it was a fun pleasurable experience for me and uh, I didn't get the AC to work I believe that the relay or the fuse might have been blown so the clutch never got to engage so if possible I'll probably have a follow-up video on this all right I hope to see ya.